Real quick word from our sponsor, Shrenergy. Uh, Shrenergy provides on-the-go backup emergency power, both for uh, your clients' homes or to take camping, quite frankly. Uh, these are systems that can come with one panel or five, um, and they can uh, charge very quickly and can be very mobile for uh, mobile homes or camping or uh, for emergency backup power uh, if and when the uh, grid goes down um, at your house or um, at your client's house. Um, here's some of the different charge times, uh, depending on uh, uh, what you're charging the battery with, uh, whether it be a car, a wall plug, or anywhere between uh, the uh, one to five different uh, solar panels that you can uh, sync up with the uh, with the device. And the device itself comes with its own inverter, so there is no extra inverter that you have to add on. It's an all-in-one battery, uh, lithium ion uh, with the inverter. And again, here's some of the other uh, usage time where you can see out of an 18 cubic foot Energy Star certified refrigerator, uh, about 33 hours of life, not including any kind of uh, solar charge on that. That's just simply from a fully charged battery. And even maybe a sump pump, if the grid goes down, could uh, power a pump for a little while, um, a sump pump or a well pump uh, as well with one of these devices. Uh, Shrinergy also has solutions for microgrid kits for your uh, clients who want to go uh, either fully off the grid or at least have a uh, kit on hand to buffer ag against grid outages because solar doesn't work when the grid goes out. Or um, uh, if they have a time of use program set up with their utility, uh, they can actually pull from the battery uh, when prices are high and then pull from the grid when prices are down. Um, so there's many different benefits. Uh, to going with a microgrid. So check out that on Trinergy's website as well. And then lastly, if you live in Michigan in one of these service territories, uh, Trinergy is looking for solar farms uh, and looking for over acreage sites. And if you're not in Michigan but live on a more rural uh, electric cooperative or small-scale utility, uh, they may actually be able to work with you as well. So uh, check them out over at Trinergy.com. All right, well, I want to welcome everybody to how a Chattanooga nonprofit develops healthy net zero homes at market rate. Uh, this course is approved for one hour in continuing education units, GBCI, AIBD, Certified Green Professional, Mary Green, uh, Non Whole House uh, Building Performance Institute. Um, it's also approved for uh, American Institute of Architects, uh, AIA, Health, Welfare, and Safety and may be applicable to your local state-based design or contractor license. Uh, today, I'll be your moderator. My name is Brett Little, and I am the executive director here at the nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. And I'm very excited to uh, welcome our speaker here today, um, coming, from you, coming to you live from uh, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, uh, an architect by trade, Michael has worked for over a decade to integrate sustainability into building practices, business operations, and public policy in the city in which he lives to improve both quality of life and the quality of the environment. After growing up in Greenville, Tennessee, Michael attended the architecture, um, attended uh, University of Tennessee at Knoxville where he received his Bachelor of Architecture, studied at ETH Zurich in Switzerland as a guest student, and then moved to Washington, D.C. to practice architecture at Envision Design at Perkins Will. He, awarded, he has award-winning uh, work for uh, national environmental nonprofits, national tech companies, um, mixed-use, mixed-income-use developments, underserved neighborhoods. In addition, he served as an advisor to the draft of the first green construction code in, major, in a major U.S. city as part of the District of Columbia's Sustainable D.C. Plan uh, before returning to Tennessee in 2014 to take over as the executive director of Green Spaces. All right, so with that, Michael, I will uh, hand it off to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brett. Um, and thanks to everybody for joining the call. Um, we're excited to share with you a little of our work. Um, it's been about four years in the making, um, so it's it's exciting to, to finally really be able to talk about some of the, the outcomes and results, as well as some of the strategies uh, of what we're doing. Um, I should just, just as a sort of quick disclaimer, say that, um, you know, Chattanooga is in Climate Zone 4, and it looks like, at least from those that 
um, that answered the poll, we do have a lot of people in five and six. Uh, and so some, some of our strategies are, are you know, not going to be directly applicable um, uh, to, those, to those climate zones. We really, really focused on the return on investment for climate zone four, so just as a, as a quick disclaimer. Um, do you, uh, Brett, do you want me to go ahead and um, share my screen or how do yep, you want to? Yep, it's all you. Okay. All right. And, and I will say, too, that um, I think, uh, you know, besides the climate zone piece, um, you know, just the, the whole uh, uh, the whole approach to it is going to be a lot of value there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Green Spaces is a uh, nonprofit based in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, our, let's see here. Um, this particular project, the Next Gen Homes, um, was sponsored by the Lindhurst Foundation locally, uh, as well as a number of other uh, partners and businesses uh, that are shown on the screen here. Um, our mission is advancing the sustainability of living, working, and building in Chattanooga and the surrounding region. And when we use that word sustainability, what what we mean is is the triple bottom line. So this sort of holistic idea of social, economic, and environmental sustainability. Um, because really, really nothing that we can do in any of these spaces is, is really sustainable unless it has all three. Um, so within our mission, um, just to briefly talk about some of the other work that we do, uh, we have a program called Empower Chattanooga. Uh, so this program started with sort of an overarching analysis with our uh, local power company and United Way looking at energy use intensity across our entire uh, service territory. And what we found is that in the winter, um, particular low-income neighborhoods were using 43% more energy per square foot than the average home in Chattanooga. And so we started a program uh, based on uh, focus groups in each individual neighborhood. Uh, we started doing free workshops that teach people low-cost and no-cost strategies to lower their own electric bills. Uh, we've since developed that into a workforce development program uh, that we teach 18 to 30-year-olds in those neighborhoods, both soft skills and also technical home energy improvement uh, skills and connect them with the subcontractors and contractors that we've had relationships with. Uh, we also just uh, have, have been working with the local schools and just did a uh, an electric car race for students um, that were designed, built, and driven by everything from elementary school students to high school students. It was it was pretty amazing. Um, the next part of our mission, working, we have a program called Greenlight. Um, that is Chattanooga's green business certification. We basically help businesses look at their internal practices and policies. Uh, so it's not, it, it has to do with the buildings that they occupy, but it's really about the business itself and their culture of sustainability. Um, and then finally, our, the building part of our mission has been focused on the project that we're gonna talk about today. So the Next Gen Homes uh, is the, the project, the, the team, shown here, uh, we, we did the design for it. Uh, we worked with Workshop Architecture locally to do the construction documents, um, Bailey Walton Interiors, uh, W.M. Whitaker, Landscape Architect, Antidote, uh, Design Bill did uh, uh, 635, 639, 643 Hamilton, Collier Construction did the first one, 631 Hamilton. We also had really great consultants uh, Condition Air helped us with the mechanical design. SK Collaborative did our initial energy modeling and helped us with the HERS rating and the LEED certification that we're pursuing. Uh, and then Vanda Mustard Design uh, really helped us a lot on the, um, the sort of return on investment analysis for different strategies. I highly, highly recommend them. 
we also got some help from Strap Watson, Spark Design, Asheville, North Carolina, and Surefoot Builders in North Carolina. So I, this probably um, is worth just reiterating why why we're doing this. Um, you know, so global climate change, uh, the the biggest contributor to that um, is is energy that's generated uh, and coal specifically is the, I think, responsible globally for I think around 40% of our, of our greenhouse gas emissions. And just personally, um, my grandfather was a uh, supervisor at a strip coal mine in Berkeley, West Virginia and passed away uh, when my father was like five from the, the working and living conditions there. So, you know, beyond the, um, beyond the environmental impact of non-renewable resources, you know, there's also a huge social impact. Uh, and then moving beyond energy, you know, also looking at deforestation as sort of the runner up for uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, you know, looking at the impact that that has globally, both on uh, climate change and habitat destruction, and the the people that really rely on forests around the world for their for their survival. Uh, this is a more local example. So this is what Chattanooga looked like in uh, the late 60s. So in 1969, Walter Cronkite uh, on the evening news announced that Chattanooga was the dirtiest city in the entire country. Uh, and, you know, that was from a lot of the industrial uh, manufacturers here. Uh, polluting the air, the water, the ground, all the above. And people were leaving Chattanooga in droves. Um, the current challenge, uh, the, the most acute sort of local challenge that we face are combined sewer overflows. Uh, so we dump uh, several hundred thousand gallons of untreated sewage and stormwater into the river uh, that we depend on uh, when it when it rains. Uh, another thing that we are really focused on is, is health. So uh, across the country, you know, Tennessee is, is one of the least healthy states, and Chattanooga within Tennessee is one of the least healthy metro areas. And so, you know, thinking about both lifestyle and material health. Uh, was a was a, a big focus of this of this project. So on the on the solution side of okay, all, all of these things are problems. What can we do about them? Um, this is one of my favorite charts to show people. So the little gray dot at the bottom of the screen is uh, the consumption that uh, energy consumption uh, across the world, and then the dots. The circle on the right correspond to the amount of non-renewable resources we have in total reserve. And then on the left, you have the amounts of renewable energies that are available every year. And so, you know, I ask people, if you have to pick one of these circles to cover the gray one, which one do you pick? You know, it's, it's a pretty obvious sort of choice. Like we. Should, we should be using the sun to to power that, um, you know, along with a mix of of other renewables. Uh, and in in our region in southeast Tennessee, we do have uh, quite a bit of hydro. Uh, we have uh, nuclear, and uh, those are sort of the the other forms of. Uh, at least non-carbon uh, generation that that serve Chattanooga. Uh, the closest the closest uh, fossil fuel plant is is up near Knoxville. 